Hello and welcome to a new series of videos about IoT. Oh, this is something everybody is talking about, the so-called Internet of Things. What shall it be? Huh? Internet? We know. Huh? I open a web page, I read the news, I watch some video on demand, I watch, I don't know, this video. <laughs> internet, I'm writing an email and so on, but what the hell is the internet of things? Huh? Well, it's not that different. It's communication. However, the communication partners are no longer persons and some machine, they're two machines. Huh? Two systems which can exchange data over the internet. That's it. Uh, that's internet of things. How is this working and why are we using it? You know, sometimes in the machinery or a lot of times in the machinery, there is data. Huh? Data is produced. The more sensors inside a machine, the more data. And since we equip the machines with more and more sensors to meet better quality criteria and so on, yeah, being safer, pa, 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 pa. there are a lot of reasons to equip a machinery with new sensors, better sensors, measure also this device and also measure this unit and yeah, the, the controls are getting more sophisticated and to be more sophisticated you need more data and if this data is there you want to watch it, natural, and you don't only want to have it on your local control, yeah? you maybe want to watch it from somewhere else. You want to see what the machine on the other end of the world is doing. Yeah? You maybe want to just to display it, you maybe just want to write it into a database to have some lines written, yeah? to see the historical development of this. Yeah? Bearing temperature, was this always that hot? I don't know. Yeah? It's maybe rub in there. Tracking. Yeah? Collect a lot of data about your system and then maybe read something out of it. This is already next next keyword, yeah? Big data. <laughs> yeah? For big data you need to collect a lot of data to analyze it. Yeah? And there you need Internet of Things. Yeah? The devices are talking to each other. Yeah? So how is this working? Yeah? How is this working? Yeah? Even it's nice to sit on the couch, press a button and book the lights, turning on or off or from blue to red or whatever. Yeah. You need somewhere a server, Internet of Things server. This is connected via this is the server, IoT server. Then you have the devices, IoT devices, and all of these devices need to be able to contact the IoT server. Yeah? This might be direct link, yeah? Yeah? or this might be via some unspecified network. Internet, for instance, yeah? network. Key thing is you need to need to contact the IoT server. How this is working now? All devices might publish the data on the IoT server, yeah? give the data to the IoT server. The IoT server is, uh, is 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 storing this data, and all devices are also allowed or may also get data from another device. So, hey, what's the temperature there? Or what is, you know, all devices might put their data in there and all other devices might get the data from there. The IoT server is something like a communication partner. Who knows it? One Necessary thing is that this communication is safe. Yeah? Not every you, you cannot allow to do 
not everybody is allowed to put their data or maybe hey, 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 I'm now saying I'm this other guy and I'm putting data in there which is fake. <laughs> this shall be prevented, of course. Yeah? Now, these devices need to be identified and, and then they are allowed to publish data or receive data. That's a, a big part, yeah? security on those IoT servers. Yeah? This is not always that good, especially at homegrown IT solutions. Yeah? When your smart pulp is the entry point of some hacker, <laughs> you're not that lucky, right? Yeah, doesn't. So, security, big topic in this IoT. Yeah? And of course, IoT also needs to be able to handle delays. You know, if I'm going via network, there might be milliseconds, there might even be seconds until a new data has arrived. This IoT server needs to be able to cope with this. Yeah? To be able, to, well, okay, then it's a little bit late. Yeah? Our system needs to be able to, to check it. That's it. Yeah? So from our devices, we have to contact the server. And therefore, we need network access. We're going to use our Arduino for this. However, you know, our Arduino Uno, also the Mega, does not really matter, they don't have network access. Would be nice to, to go into Wi-Fi or something like this. Well, there are microcontrollers out there which can do this. And those microcontrollers are also programmable via the Arduino IDE, which we are currently used to already. Yeah? So one of these microcontrollers is this ESP, ESP thing. They come in different sizes. That's an ESP, ESP8266. That's an ESP32. Yeah? And you see already here, this part here, and also here you might see it, this is covered here a little bit with, with paint. These are antennas, and these are Wi-Fi antennas. This one is able to contact the Wi-Fi network. Here I can program it, it's a micro USB. I have also a bunch of in and outputs. And also here I have a bunch of in and outputs. And also this one is able to contact Wi-Fi. This has even Bluetooth. So, there are controllers out there. However, they come in different form factors. You know, this is the same, you see it's the same chip there, but with less contact possibilities. Yeah? And the most simple one is this here. Yeah? See, it's also the same. It's pretty small yeah? and quite cheap. Yeah? And this is why we are going to use this one. That's an ESP eighty two sixty six slash zero one. Yeah. That's this device. This is the controller, the small part. We have eight pins. Yeah. If it's located like this, yeah, then those eight pins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. They do have the following meaning. Yeah. So this here is ground. Yeah. This here is power supply. Attention, this power supply here is only plus 3.3 .3 volt. So that's not a 5 volt system, that's a 3.3 volt system. This is a little bit different than on our Arduino. Then here we do have a reset line, whenever we connect reset to the ground, this will stop program execution and start it whenever I open reset. That's basically the reset button on my Arduino. 
and this here is the chip enable this here chip enable if I'm connecting this to plus 3.3 volts so to VCC the chip will start executing its program if it's not enabled the chip will remain not executing then I can do the power supply not enable it that's it the next two things are TX and RX pins so here we have the TX that's the TX transmit and here we have the RX receive line this we know already from our serial communication it's working exactly the same way so there is transmit where the device can send something there is RX where the device can receive something and then we do have two general purpose IOs and they for whatever reason they are called 0 and 2 and the first one this is 0 and this is general purpose IO 2 this one that's the pinout and you see yeah but how how can I connect this to, 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 to our Arduino and how can I program this and so on? There is no USB. Puck, puck. Uh, yeah. And also this 3.3 volt. Yeah. Our Arduino has 5 volt. And if our Arduino is sending something to the RX pin with 5 volts, we will grill this one. We will simply destroy it. Yeah. So need to take care that here we only appear 3.3 volt. So to enable the handling with this device a little bit, to make it a little bit easier, easier I've designed this this plate. It's not state of the art, you know. There are still standard resistors on it. There are deal cases and so on. So it's not state of the art. However, it's easy to solder, huh? and for us it should be sufficient. Here we have a board where we can exactly plug in our ESP8266. We have a reset button where this reset is wired to ground so if I press this button I already connect the reset to ground so I can do a reset here. I have a proc button. What is this proc button? This proc button is if I want if I'm just using this it will start the program. If I want to program this device, I have to put it into a programming mode. To program, to put it into the programming mode, I have to connect the general purpose I.O. Zero, I think. One moment, I have to, to look it up. I don't know it from the top of the head. Yeah, General purpose I.O. Zero, I have to connect it to ground and then power it up. Yeah? Then I press PROC, I press RESET. Then a release reset, and since now the proc button is connected general purpose I.O. to ground, this will switch to programming mode. Then I can re the, release the programming button, and then I'm in programming mode, and I can program this device via the TX and RX pin. Okay. There will be a video where we program this device. Okay. The idea behind this, uh, and, uh, this this I see here, this I see why I put this here, this is doing the level transformation. This is doing the level transformation, that's a CD74HC4050E. So it will transfer the 5 volt from the Arduino to 3.3 volt for, for the ESP, so we don't destroy it. The other way around, the 3.3 volt they will be understood by the Arduino uh, because 3.3 3 volt is enough to trigger the 5 volt input. So here we have then the connection to Arduino. So we have 3.3 3 volt power supply, on the other end we have ground, so this is the power supply. Then we have RX and DX buttons where we can connect the Arduino to, to talk to this one. Uh, and then we have the digital output 0 and 2. Uh, so this is the digital the multi-purpose IOs I have also wired to here. 
These are also connected, the LEDs are also connected to the multi-purpose IOs, to these two. Yeah. And they are labeled with server and W LAN. Yeah. Why is this? Yeah. Because actually the idea behind is that here on the ESP8266 a program is running which is contacting the IoT server yeah, and via the interface I only tell this program here hey tell the temperature is now 32 degrees Celsius yeah. sometime later we can contact it again hey tell now the temperature is now 32.2 degrees Celsius and this device here will do the communication to the IoT server yeah. so here we have zero communication to our Arduino this board and this will simply transfer this to the IoT server. So this is acting as, a, as sort of a gateway. The program which is running on the ESP, this of course needs to be fit to the IoT server. We will get to know two IoT systems, we will get to know MQTT and ThingWorks and we will, do use, we will use different programs here uh, at this, this device. So this is the adapter, the Wi-Fi adapter for our Arduino. There are also Wi-Fi shields out there, however they always use quite some I.O. pins. This one I only use RX and TX pins and I am more flexible with this. Next time we will start. Next time we will start by talking about the first IoT system we are going we are going to get to know we're talking about MQTT yeah? message queue telemetry transfer how this is working and so on this will then be in next video for this time thank you very much for listening goodbye <laughs>